has to do with the rate of change of things. So we should probably start there. If you'll notice, very chicken derivative here. Look at that. There you go. Okay, so we have the derivative. We took the derivative of both sides with respect to time, right? Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Did everybody gel with that? <laughs> yeah? Okay. No. No? <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to implicit differentiation. Did that gel? No. Oh. Yes. Right. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to only x. So that when you got to y, you had to do d over dr over dt is basically our prime, right? It's basically what? Our prime. Yep. It's r prime, but r prime doesn't really inform you about what you took the derivative yeah. with respect mm -hmm. to, so that's why we write it this way. Yeah. Or I do. Yeah. And the radius of the vector is the back. Wait. We're explaining stuff. Hold uh, on. I need to know what the radius of that vector is. So that's implicit okay. differentiation, <laughs> implicit differentiation is just before this, right? It's a it's a building block to, to talk about radiated rates. If we take the derivative of something like uh, this is implicit. Uh, y squared plus 2y plus x squared equals 5. So we're just making, making that up, right? And what we want to know is how, wait, what is the derivative? What is dy dx? What is the derivative of y with respect to x, right? So if we're going to, say, take the derivative of x squared with respect to x, we should know how to do that. Yeah? Can you just explain real quick what you mean when you say with respect to? Say y with respect to x. Which yeah. one is doing what? Which one's doing what? I don't you know. What? Uh, with respect to x means x is the input. So x and y is, is the, the output. So if it's with respect to x, you can't use a power. You have to use the stream over y with respect to x. Yes. If it's with respect to x, that means that x is the independent variable. So dy over dx would be root n over y. Yep. Which was. We, we took the derivative with respect to x. I'm saying pretty much the same thing you just said. Okay. So with respect to x, if we take the derivative with respect to x of something with x in it, it's business as usual, 2x. Okay. But if we take the derivative of something with y in it with respect to x, it would be dy times what? dy over y. Right, because we treat y as, well, not as if. It is. It is a function of x. It's an inside function now, right, which we need to before implicit differentiation was chain rule, right? So now we're using the chain rule on this guy right here, two y, right? And if this was if, if this was explicit, if it was you know inside of the squared, it was five uh, x to the sixth plus two x squared, right? Then we would multiply by the derivative of whatever that is, right? But we don't have that explicitly stated, so we just say we would take the derivative of y, whatever it is, if we had it explicitly stated as a function. Take the derivative of y and multiply it by the derivative of the outside function. So are we going to treat y like it's a function of x? Yeah, we're, we're treating it like that because that's what it is. <gasps> it's a function of x. Mm -hmm. OK, then we come to this one. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. We just got the constant multiple rule in here, 2 times the derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx. Plus dx equals derivative of 5 is 0. And then we get the factor out the dy dx term from both of these. Or factor, I guess. Factor out the dy dx factor. And we get 2y plus 2. Let's subtract 2x from both sides. Is that good? Then dy dx. Negative 2x over 2y plus 2 that you give us. Okay, we solve for dy dx. If you kept taking derivatives, does that would you eventually get rid of all y on one side? Or would you ever? Oh, uh, depending on the function, okay. on the kind of function. This one, yes, because the, these are just power functions. But if we were using like trig functions or something, then they're always going to lay in like the cosine on y. Okay. So yeah, it just depends. Okay, so there's an example of implicit differentiation. That's what we did there. Okay, well this is implicit differentiation, right? Implicit meaning that 
the function, the, the functional relationship between one variable and another is implied. It's not explicit. Okay. Um, the there is a an implied relationship, right? We we haven't taken the derivative yet. There's an implied relationship or functionality between v and t, volume and time. Does time affect volume? In this case, yeah, right? And conceivably, it's believable that given enough information and how much time has gone by, we should be able to find the volume, right? Does that seem reasonable, right? Okay. Also, R is a function of time. As time goes by, R changes, uh, maybe not consistently, right? Maybe not at the same rate, but in a predictable way, right? Maybe the rate at which rate the race is changing is itself changing, but you can predict that change. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of like how we know it's going to get smaller. Yeah, we know that that, but not by an exact amount. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The radius uh, is going to decrease, and it's like, yeah, as time passes, it's going to decrease. I kind of imagine it's going to decrease faster and faster because we talked about that, how we're, we're you know, uh, taking away a consistent volume or theoretically a consistent volume. Okay, so they're both functions of time. That's implied. And so what we're doing, we're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to t. We're doing implicit differentiation again. We're just taking the derivative of both sides with respect to not v and not r, but some other variable completely but with respect to t. Okay? So the rate at which the volume is changing with respect to time, right? time's going by and that's causing the volume to change, the rate at which that's happening is equal to the rate at which this thing is changing, this whole thing, this whole side rate at which this whole thing is changing with respect to t, right? And now that we've built up this DP toolbox of derivative taking tools, uh, we can take the derivative of this with respect to t. We've got 4 thirds pi, that's just a constant. So we've got the constant multiple rule telling us that we can just take that constant and multiply it by the derivative of this guy right here. Okay. So we've got the constant multiple times the derivative. The derivative would be 3 times r squared. But since we're taking the derivative with respect oh, to t, times dr dt, times the derivative with respect to t. Okay. It's just implicit differentiation. It's just that in this example, where we only treated y like a function of x and then used a chain rule on it and had to multiply by dy dx, uh, but x was fine because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. Now both of the variables, or all of the variables, if there's more than two, uh, are all inside functions now. We have to use a chain rule on all of them because we're taking the derivative with respect to some other variable, usually time. So, so would R kind of be like a V? So it's just like, like a plug V? Yeah, like V is an inside function of Y almost, and Y is an inside function of X. Uh, I don't know if I'd say, I don't think I'd phrase like it as an inside function, 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 but an implied function. 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 or x and y if you want. x is implied to be a function of z, y is implied to be a function of z, though z is not even in the equation. But z is affecting. T, time, is affecting v, it's affecting r, right? They're changing with respect to time. As time goes by, these things change. As a direct result of time having gone by. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so now we have the derivative with respect to time. Any questions about that now that we've gone over implicit, we talked about a chain rule? Any questions about that? So if you have a question. I don't know what question to ask. Do <laughs> um, you have any questions about this? No, not that. Great. Okay. Uh, do you understand what this is? Okay. What is this? Volume. It's the volume formula. If you look in the back of the book, there's a formula for the volume of the sphere. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the, of the sphere. Okay? All right. So we have this relationship between the volume and the radius. The radius changes the volume. If the radius changes, the volume changes uh, with respect to this, you know, this formula here. We plug it in, we do the math, we get volume. Okay? But now we want to know how fast how fast is the radius changing? Well, how
how fast is the radius changing has to do with the noise or rate of change. Right? And rate of change, it should be like deeply embedded in our minds now, rate of change, derivative. Derivative, rate of change, rate of change, derivative, yeah. Could you take the um, volume formula and plug it into DDDD to make, well, or not there, but use it as D to get rid of D and solve for the rate of change here? Um, I, see, I see the, the idea you have there, but. Like plug it in for this. DDD. This V right here, it is volume, but it's not like it's D times V, if that's what you're thinking. This is saying, this is like one thing. Just like when we say F of X, it's not F times X. Right? If you put those letters next to each other, they don't mean F times X. There's a different kind of relationship. And there's a different kind of relationship here. This just means the change, right? D for delta, delta standing for change. A little d instead of the sign for delta because the, the letter delta because we're trying to convey a very small change. Yeah, I understand that. So we can't really. There's no substitution that can happen here, right? There is no v by itself in this equation. Uh, this is the change in v. So I mean, not a bad idea, but it turns out that no, we can't. We could. Um, we could. Here's r in this equation. So we could solve for r here and, and do that, so that that would help us. But, you but there is, there's possible to make that substitution, right? Um, but it turns out we don't have enough information to like well, have that be useful. So we could just like solve for the RDT in the last one. Kind of. Well, before we do that, I'm going to come back to uh, I was saying rate of change derivative. So we just just like really. Strong link in our mind between when we hear rate of change, we think derivative. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Rate of change derivative. Okay. So if we want to know how fast the radius is changing, we're thinking derivative. The derivative uh, of the radius function, right? I mean, we could just solve this for r, r equals, and then take the derivative with respect to t. Or we could just take the derivative and then solve for dr dt after that. Either way, it's going to be the same thing. Hold on. Not quite there. We're close to there. Okay. So now I want to ask, are there any questions about how we take the derivative with respect to t? Anybody got questions about that? Yeah. Got a question? Go over it? Yeah. Okay. Well, on this side, there's the derivative of v with respect to t. It's just dv dt. It is the derivative of v with respect to t. I mean, I can't, I can't say it any differently, right? So it is just dv dt. Over here, over here. We're going to take the derivative of this side. All right, we take the derivative of this function. Well, this part of the function is just a constant, four thirds times pi. So whenever that happens, we can just take the constant multiple, bring it into the derivative, right? And this gets multiplied by the derivative of the actual var or varying part of the function. Okay, so four thirds pi comes over here, and we just now need to multiply it by the derivative of r cubed. Okay, but r is a function of t. It's the inside function. It's the, the function inside the cube function. So first we have to take the derivative of the outside and multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the, the derivative of the outside is 3r squared times the derivative of the inside with respect to t would be r prime, or dr dt to be very specific that it's with respect to time. And then just simplify. So you got 4 thirds times 3, 3 is cancel, you're left with Four times pi times r squared times the r dt. Better? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So now we have a relationship between the change in the volume with respect to time and the change in the radius with respect to time. Let's come back again. The change in volume uh, with respect to time. As time goes by, volume is going to change in this way. Uh, a relationship between that and the the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. Okay. What's that? So now if you want to know what how fast r is changing, that's the R D T. That's the R D T. So let's solve for the R D T, which isn't hard. Right? We just got four pi r squared times the R D T. So we just need to divide by four pi r squared. Yeah. So D B D T 
Uh, oh, over. Here, I'll write it this way. Make it clear. So dv dt over or four pi r squared is the r dt, the thing that we're trying to find. So to find this, we just need to know all these things. Yeah. Do we know how fast the volume is changing with respect to time? Yeah. yeah. How fast is it changing? Negative, Negative point 0.5. Point five. Negative 0.5, right? This is the, the disappointment that I felt was that, you know, I, I picked a bad candy. It didn't change consistently. I guess the, they got harder as it got to the middle or something. So it wasn't changing consistently. So we, we fudged it a little bit. We made up some data. And we made it so that every time in this made up scenario, the person took it out of their mouth and they measured it, they found that they had sucked away 0.5 centimeters cubed in that minute, or one centimeter cubed over two minutes, or whatever like that. So that would be a substitutable for DVDT? Yep, that's how fast the volume is changing with respect to pi. Right. right? And then four times pi times do we know the radius? 0.677. we measured it. Physically measure that squared equals the RDT. So there you go. It's just numbers. Now we can do, do the arithmetic. Yeah. So I have multiple radiuses written down. Which one are we going by? The last one you said in there, or the beginning of this? Oh, the the oh yeah, we're going with the radius at five minutes. Okay. Negative. Yeah, negative. What are the and units of that chain? Squared. It's the radius changing, right? Centimeters per minute. Yeah. Now, if we were to plug in all the units, they should cancel out just right, right? This is centimeters cubed per minute. This is uh, just a number four pi. This is centimeters, but then you square it, so this should be centimeters squared. So the centimeter squared will cancel out two of these centimeters, and we get centimeters per minute. Okay. Yeah. So if we just change this kind of imaginary situation of the constant, it doesn't matter like whether it's the same or the same. You won't like half five minutes, but if it was different, like if it was like an x plus or something like this, how would you kind of just use this graph? That would be the the thing about doing stuff in real life is that sometimes it doesn't work out the way you. Because you want to make this, this mathematical model, and models don't represent real life situations exactly, but we can make them work pretty well. The problem with ours is that they, they must make different layers of the job breaker out of different you know, densities, right? Because it should be close, but it wasn't really that close at all. Um, so we just had to make it up. If it wasn't consistent, or we couldn't fudge it a little bit and make it consistent, it would be unsolvable. Like we need, we need to be able to, to say what the rate of change of the volume was, right? Yeah, I'm just saying like in a different scenario where I'm saying in a different scenario, if <coughs> it was not consistent, we wouldn't be able to solve a problem like that. Well, not inconsistent, but it changes at an inconsistent rate. Like right. In this case, five. But that's the situation we're in with the RDT. It's changing at a consistent rate. The rate of change is changing at a consistent rate. And we have to do all this calculus to figure out that precise rate of change at that moment. If it was as easy as just like subtracting two values, we would just do that for the RDT. That's what, that's what calculus is all about, is trying to find an instantaneous change. Okay. So uh, centimeters per minute, that's the RDT at five minutes. We could look at our data and see if that's what we'd expect, right? So we could see at five minutes, from four minutes to five minutes, we could see how much has changed in that minute. And from five minutes to six minutes, we could see how much has changed from five minutes to six minutes in that minute, right? And they should be kind of close to what we found, 0 0.086 or something. Yeah, 0 0.0868.
trying to establish here with related rates, a classic and challenging uh, topic, is that there's a relationship between how this thing is changing and how this other thing is changing. There's a scenario where lots of stuff is changing. The radius is changing, the volume is changing, uh, the circumference is changing, lots of different things are changing. Then we can write relationships between lots of different things. It, it comes down to what's the question? What are we being asked? That's what we have to, that's the challenging part. Taking all that information, uh, looking at what we're being asked, and then I think the hardest part turns out to be writing that first equation. Writing down v equals 4 thirds pi r squared, and knowing that I'm going to take the derivative of that, that's the most challenging part. Okay? So let's do another problem um, that's, that's less hands on, but we can watch it happen. Uh, and we can work on that and analyze that problem. Um, but can we move on from this? Is, is that any questions from that? Okay, that makes like 75% sense. Yeah. 75. So what we're going to do is this is a, a video. We're going to watch a video of, um, of, the, of this scenario right here, where there's ripples in a, in a pool. Okay. So it's slow motion. You can see this guy uh, has touched the surface of the water. You can tell that by the shadow that we're seeing. I think the shadow of the ripple. All right. And what shape is that making? Circle. 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 Circular ripple. Yeah. Okay. Um, jump back over here and. Right on top of it, the circle, ready to go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask questions about like how fast is this thing changing, right? What things are changing as we radius. let time go by? The radius, the area, the area, the area the diameter, the circumference. the circumference is changing. We can ask questions about any of these things: circumference, area, radius, Height. diameter. The what? Height of the ripple. Like oh, the well, shallow. that would be a little bit more challenging. I think that might remain kind of consistent. Well, gravity. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> we'll we'll keep to the very simple circle shape, right? Aspects about the circle itself. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to go into two seconds to three seconds, and we'll make some observations, and then from three seconds to four seconds until I. Whoa, right there. Okay. So you see how I got bigger? Okay. So uh, I'm gonna try with this. circle. I'm going to get the centers the same. All right, so at two seconds it was this big, and at three seconds it's this big. Okay, mm -hmm. so what things changed? Diameter, radius, area, circumference. Everything about it has changed. Okay? Uh, all right, so now we're going to go from three seconds to four seconds. And I'll really start to talk about some stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think I kind of got a little too far into four seconds. Morning. Morning. All right, so now we're looking at four seconds. So let's copy this again. So now we're really starting to talk about some stuff. 
because um, what would you say about how fast the radius is changing? Would you believe that it's consistent? Not too high number. Um, well, let's think. Right, when you touch the surface of water and it pushes water away from your finger in all directions, would you believe that that it keeps going at that consistent rate? Like if I push a, a something away from me, do you think it would have a consistent yeah. velocity? Right? Yeah. It might slow down a little bit because of friction, but the yeah. friction yeah. of water on water is not very high. Yeah. Okay. So the, the rate at which the radius is changing seems to be a consistent thing. That's an important thing about radius, related waste problems is that one of the rates, one of the things is changing is consistent, is uh, a constant. Okay. So it seems like the radius changing is a consistent thing. Um, let's talk about the area. Okay. Now I'm just picking it because I'm, I'm essentially like writing a problem in a textbook. Right? I'm just choosing area. Could have chosen, chosen uh, circumference. Diameter probably wouldn't be a good idea because it's radius and diameter. If radius is changing at a constant rate, so would the diameter be. So we'll just choose area. Okay. So the radius is changing at a, at a constant rate. Okay. Even if it's not exactly true, let's just agree upon it because it's believable. Okay. What about the rate at which the area is changing at every second? What's that? Maybe it's exponential, okay. Exponential but constant, I, I, let's say consistent. Yeah. Maybe it's exponential, maybe it's something else. But do you think that like from this uh, time to this time, you, you're gaining some area, right? Yeah. yeah. And from this time to this time you're gaining some area, are you gaining the same amount of area that you did back here? No. Constant, like three is a constant. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, it's not gaining, say, five square inches of uh -huh. area. It's gaining like five and one twenty five or something like that. Six twenty five. Yeah. Like Maybe it's that. I think it's probably not exponential. It's probably just something a little slower than exponential. Um, well, okay. So let's let's think about it then. We're gaining this much area in, say, the first second. Let's say this is at time zero, this is time one second Should after that. Should we use the right hand? Yeah, we can. Oh. I think it, I don't, I don't know, maybe it will. But I like coloring these dumb. <laughs> um, so we gained this much area, all right? Now, the same amount of time goes by for the next uh, time period. So how wide is this compared to how wide is this? It should be exactly the same. I mean, the way I'm drawing it might not be exactly the same. But if the radius is changing at a constant rate, it should be exactly the same. So if this, this red, uh, if this width is the same as this width, what would you say about this area that we're gaining? It's what? Larger, you said? Now, would you say that this amount, this green amount, is more than this yellow amount? Yeah. yeah. So the velocity, not the velocity, the, the area is changing at not a constant rate. Mm. Right? The radius might be changing at one centimeter per second, but the area is not changing at, say, one square centimeter a second. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's changing maybe at one square centimeter a second here, and then two square centimeters a second here, and maybe four, I, I'm not sure exactly how it's changing, but we're going to figure that out. Yeah. I was thinking maybe like that it's bigger and there's a change how much bigger, so like the ratio between how much bigger it is to the previous area would be the same. We can find out. Is it just the ratio of, of one to the other? That's the question we're going to ask. How fast is the area changing at whatever time? Okay. But uh, like who said, we need some numbers. It's really good numbers. We need some numbers, right? And we're just going to make them up. Okay. So, what am I gonna write? write in my notes. So let's say that the uh, radius is changing. Changing <laughs> at uh, five centimeters per second. That's going to go metric, and we'll go second. <coughs> So the question
question I'm going to ask is like, uh, how fast is the uh, area changing? And we can ask this in lots of different ways. How fast is the area changing when the area is blah, blah? How fast is the area changing when the radius is whatever? How fast is the area changing at however many seconds? We can ask this question in lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. The thing about that is whatever information I give you, there's a relationship between all these things, the area, the radius, the time. Right? So we should be able to figure it out. If I give you the area, you should be able to figure out the radius or the time, whatever it is that you need. Right? And so the, the thing that, that uh, is starting to overcome this first challenge is what relationship am I supposed to start with? Well, we're talking about area, we're talking about radius, we're talking about time, okay? Time, though, time doesn't come in until you take the derivative, right? So forget about time for a second. Start about area, radius, and that sounds like the only things we're talking about. Is there a, some kind of a, a mathematical relationship between area and radius that you can think of? There's a formula for area, and it involves the radius? What is it? Pi r squared? Yeah. Area equals pi r squared. All right. So we're really starting to get somewhere. Now we have to ask a question. Okay. How fast is the area changing? How do you want to ask it? That's what we're going to find oh. out, but like a specific question, like how fast is the area changing when, would it be like three days? Yeah. Say what? What's the rate of change in area with respect to time? That's what we're inevitably going to like ask about, but we, we need to ask at a certain point in time. So like three seconds. At three seconds. Right? At three seconds. Or like I said, we could ask at three, really we want to know what time, right? We want to know what moment in time we need to go to and start asking questions about that. But I can ask it in lots of different ways. When the radius is this much, well, if the radius is changing at a consistent, at a constant rate, and uh, I tell you how big the radius is at some point in time, you can figure out what that point in time is, right? We really want to know how many seconds has gone by, how many minutes or whatever. Right. So um, now I'm going to take this into the Flip chart. I'm gonna start talking about it there. I enjoy how uh, fast the ice cube was recommended for you. <laughs> it recommended? Yeah, down. <laughs> it's recommended for me. That's similar to this video. It says re recommended for you. Where? Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. Recommended for you. Last like, hack feeling. I do like last life life hacks. Those are pretty fun. Uh, oh, <laughs> get out of here. I don't know how to yeah. decide. Watch it, you should learn how to quickly peel eggs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's a scenario. This is the kind of question we'd be asked, except for it's going to be asked more like in a book. Like, uh, the radius of a ripple on the surface of a pool is changing at five centimeters per second. How fast is the area changing at three seconds? Right? That's what it's going to be asking. This is a scenario we're going to be referring to. All right. Well, here's this relationship that we've already established. Area equals pi r squared. Yes. Yes. So um, they've given us information about the radius. They're asking questions about the area. And so we should try and relate those things that they're, they're giving us information about as minimally as possible, right? Involve as few variables as possible. Right? And there is a relationship between area and radius and involving nothing else. So that's a great one to use. Now we, what? Well, now we want to know how fast the area is changing. What is that? How fast the area is changing, obviously with respect to time. Da over dt. Well, which equals equal pi r two r two r pi two r, and then it'd be dr dt. Yes, sir. With respect to time, using the chain rule as needed. What's that? 
We know DRDC. What is DRDC? Five. Five, Five centimeters per second. So D so, so D A D T <laughs> equals Five times two L times N. Two well we got five, right? For D R D C. What about R? What is R at three seconds? No. Uh, oh. It's fifteen? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Why did you say that? Three seconds, five centimeters per second, three times five. There you go. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was pretty simple math. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. Basically, distance equals rate times time. <laughs> right? How far has the edge traveled from zero, uh, between zero seconds and three seconds? Now, we have to assume that it started at, z at nothing, right? The, the yeah. radius yeah. was zero to start with. Yeah. Okay? So that might be another piece of information that they'll give you. Well, it'll have to be in some way. At time zero, the radius was whatever. We could change it. At time zero, the radius was three centimeters. Right? So now how does that change it? What is radius now? At time zero, it was three centimeters. 18. So now it's 18 centimeters, right, after three seconds. <coughs> That's all that changes. But we'll, we'll start, uh, because Kelly uh, put it so well, we'll, we'll go with that time, um, let's say radius, at t equals zero is zero. Okay. Any questions so far about what we've done? Are we so adeptly accomplished? We good? Or do we have questions? No, good. All right, great. So now to find D A D T, but who, let's fill in the, the units here. Let's fill in these units real quick. Fifteen what? Uh, Seven centimeters. centimeters. Five what? Centimeters per second. Centimeters per second. So when we multiply centimeters by centimeters per second, what do we get? Centimeters squared per second. Centimeters squared per second. So we should get uh, thirty, sixty. 60 pi centimeters squared. What? Whoa, no. 150. Oh, 150. Oh, 150. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. Five five. It's 450. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. 30 <laughs> times five. Here's nine. Two through nine. What if you ran? So we can we can leave it as 150 pi centimeters squared per second, or we can multiply by pi and get the decimal. But either way, it's all the same. So it changes. It's changing at what? What? What is 150 times five? 471.23 or 71.23 or two four. Is that normal? Okay. Yeah. So that many centimeters squared per second. So at that second, at three seconds, let's um, draw another circle. Uh, circle in the center. Right. At three seconds, it's going to be. The radius at time equals zero. Right? What's that? For like assuming. Assuming, yeah. We'll say this. At time equals zero, radius equals zero. Okay. <laughs> okay, so at three seconds, which actually three seconds, here's zero seconds, one second, two seconds, maybe this is actually at three seconds. So at three seconds, the amount of area that we're gaining at that exact moment, not between two seconds and three seconds, or three seconds and four seconds, but at three seconds exactly, we're gaining this much area per second, right? But then a split second after that, it's gonna change, okay? Um, well, here's, here it is, that, like we talked about, is it exponential? Is it doubling? What, you know, what's it doing? Well, it's changing. Uh, at a, a factor of whatever the radius is. It's a constant multiple times whatever the radius is. This is a constant, right? So it's going up by a factor of whatever the radius is at that moment. Okay. So every, every time marker will be pi times two times drdt, all constants. 
as us, whatever R is for that moment. Okay, so the challenge is finding the relationship between the things that you're told about and the things that you're asked to about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing, the most important thing, because after that you just take the derivative of respect to time, usually time. Sometimes beta, sometimes x, sometimes depending on the problem. But the first thing you have, you have to be able to do is take uh, and write an equation involving, relating the things that you're given information about and the things that you're asked about. Okay? And that, that could be a real challenge. Like I said, I could have asked questions about anything, the circumference, the diameter, the radius, the whatever. Um, but I chose, as the author of this problem, to ask about the area. So you need to take that and involve a, a relevant equation. Yeah? So in regards Depends. For circles, probably not. For rectangles, definitely not. <laughs> For an ellipse, yeah, they'll probably give you the area of an ellipse. Um, so it depends. Rectangles? Squares are harder. Squares are harder. Same thing. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to give you one from the, the homework set. It's your job to find the relationship and take the derivative and plug things in. So let's find a good one. 2.6. Stuart is a day, like a review day. Uh, we're finishing up 2.6. I'm going to give you another day on 2.6. We're going to, if we have time, yes. if we have time we're going to play a little game. Are you serious? If we don't, we just don't get to play that game. And what? next time will be a review time. Everybody hurry. What's well, the game? Thank you for not having a test on Monday. That was it's good. It's up to Oh. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, but I never think about that. Here we go. Number 27. 27. Yeah. Okay, I had a question. I'm so happy right now. Do you have a question? Well, yeah, I was just confused on oh, the word on it. Why did you ask a question while we were doing it? What? Why did you ask a question while we were doing it? Oh, actually, we're doing your homework. I had a question. Yeah. Oh. So now, knowing what you know, having heard me spiel what I spiel, uh, go ahead and uh, attempt this problem new. Don't look at your old work if you started it. Okay. Just start it new. Think about what are they giving you information about? What are they asking a question about? And how can I relate those things? I hate Triangle? Yeah. <laughs> when a ladder is leaning against a house, I hate How many times is that? Okay. Give me like two minutes. Give me two minutes. Do you know we're going to play a game? Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we've got to so, be okay, man. Oh, so we've got a house. We've got a ladder. Scally, go cat. Okay. Pull up and record you all day. Awesome. No. Pull the keys. And, uh, <laughs> hey, the more you talk, the less game you play. Um, so they give us information about how long the ladder is, okay? How fast this is moving away from the wall, and how, and then you can see in part A they're asking about how fast is this falling, right? So we want to look for relationships that tie all that together, right? How are, how can those things possibly be tied together? So you you made a few you know observations. Those three things are part of a right triangle, right? The house, uh, the, the side of the house is 90 degrees to the ground, uh, the ladder leading up against it, no matter where it moves, it's always going to make a right triangle of some kind, so there's a relationship you can take advantage of. Right? <coughs> yeah? Yes? Yes. Okay. Well, but these things are changing, right? They're varying, so they're going to need to be variable. Okay. If they're varying, if they're changing, we want the derivative to include the possibility of them to change, which means we need to leave them as variables, but we need to write that relationship. So what's the relationship between a 25-foot ladder and x distance and a y distance? x squared plus y squared plus 25 foot. x squared. Oh, that's fun. Uh-oh. x squared plus y squared oh. equals 625, I think. Yes. Done. So no matter what, if we knew how long the x distance was, we could find the y distance. And part A, that's part of it. Right? 
the x distance is uh, 17 and then? 7, 15, and 24. Oh, 7, 15, and 24. Okay. 24, since this is a 25 foot ladder, that'd be just before it hits the ground, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. not long after that. Okay. Um, so if we want to know how fast this is changing, right? The y is the vertical distance from the, from the ground to the top of the ladder. This is the horizontal distance from the house to the base of the ladder. Uh, we want to know how fast this is changing, um, and they give us information about how fast this is changing. Yeah. Right? So we're talking about rate of change here, we're talking about how fast this thing is changing, so we immediately think what? Derivative. 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 With respect to? Time. Time, because time is the, the thing that is controlling the whole scenario. Okay? So take the derivative with respect to time for x squared. What's that? 2x. dx dt because x is an inside function now because x is implied to be a function of t, yeah? yeah. It will be. Okay. It will be. Okay, what's the derivative of y squared with respect to t? Y y t. And the derivative is 625 as well. Okay. Now as Sarah said, dx dt is a given. It's two feet per second. It's positive, it's getting bigger, right? So 2x times, what? Times 2, is it? I forgot what the number was. Uh, times 2y dy dt, okay? This isn't changing, right? The rate of change is consistent, okay? This is changing, but the rate of change isn't changing. It's consistent, it's constant, okay? So we can plug that in. Here, y is changing, dy dt is changing, okay? So we want to leave it with variables. The, one of the, the big mistakes is, even after you write the correct equation, you start plugging things in. But like you're, this is just drawing a relationship between these sides if nothing's changing, right? If, if we're just looking at a picture, not a video. A video changes, a picture just stays still. Okay, but we want it to change. So we want to leave those things variable so that we involve the rates at which they're changing. Okay, so don't plug things in here. Wait till you take the derivative. All right, so now this is two feet per second. Um, and these things we don't uh, know quite yet. It's asking us how fast it's changing, so we should probably isolate it. Okay, so dy dt is equal to negative 4x. Okay, subtract 4x over 2y. So negative x or negative 2x over y. Yeah, is there a question? How's that now? It's like just a catch up, like two to the negative twice, like two to the negative fifty. Yeah. Right. Change in y is given by negative two x over y. So then we can just plug in like seven fifteen and twenty four for that x. What's that? Yeah, if you plug it in, you still have a y. But you're going to use Pythagorean theorem to find that. Pythagorean theorem to find y. Okay, so we have three different uh, problems here, right? One with seven feet, one with 15 and 24. Okay, so dy dt for the first scenario would be negative 2 times 7 over, well now we have to figure out what y is. So 625 minus 49, right? Because 7 squared would be 49. 576, take the square root. 24. So negative 7 over 12. What? Negative 7 over 12, what? The second one is when the distance is 15 feet. So dy dx equals negative 2 times 15 over, we solve for y over here, 15 squared is 225, 625 minus 225 is uh, 400. 425? 425? No, 400. 400. 420 is the square root of 400. So negative 30 over 20, 15 over 10, negative 15 over
So let's take a look at this. How, how fast is it changing uh, earlier on compared to how it's changing later on? It's not it's it's slower. It's it's slower. Slower. It's faster. slower. Slower? It goes yeah. faster, faster the more you. Faster, right? This is less than one, this is more than one. That, that yeah. alone will tell me that. Well, in the negative direction. Slower at the beginning. Slower at the beginning, and then later it's faster. Yeah, in the negative direction. Yeah. Is it following my like gravity? I don't oh, know. I go through the negative. That's why. The thing, it, it does, but whatever is doing this is that causing the base to move out at a constant rate. So it's probably not gravity doing it alone. Maybe it's a, a person or somebody pulling on it. <laughs> dy dx in the third scenario, negative 2 times 24 over, well, this one, this is 7, this is 24, so it must be the same. 27, uh, seven. negative 48 over 7 feet per second. Um, and this is a lot faster than this, right? This is a little bigger than 1, this is uh, almost negative. So part B to this question was something. <laughs> consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, the ladder, and the ground. I think we already considered that. Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing when the base of the ladder is seven feet from the wall. So keep in mind, we've already done some of this work. When, the, when one side is seven, the other is 24. That might be useful. Okay. Um, but now we're not asking about one side, how fast one side is changing. We're, we're talking about how fast the area is changing. So now we need to do the Now we have a, probably a little bit more of a challenging problem than part B. No. Uh, it's, but we want to know how fast the area is changing. They're giving us information about the base and the height, and so area equal half base times height would be a relevant equation to use. Oh, this would be x times y divided by b. Uh, yeah, x, B-H. y, b, b, h, however you want to call it. Yeah. We did we did start with x and y, so we'll, we'll stick we'll stick with it. For x, yeah. that's how fast x is changing. Is that what we'll be using? For the yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Did no, you say? Yeah. 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 I'm putting x when I should be putting t. Oh. Right. So we want to know how fast the area is changing with respect time, and so we need to take the derivative of the area function. dA dt equals constant multiple rule, so we just multiply by one half. Now what do we have? Oh. Slot accrual needs to be used. Oh, oh. But it's easy, right? So it's <laughs> x times, so it'd be 1 times, dy or y dx dt times y. So dx dt times y minus yeah. x plus x times dy dt. x times dy dt. Good, right? And the reason why they had us do the second is because we found dy dt in several different oh. scenarios. So now we have a dy dt to plug in. Okay. So um, when when x is seven or when y is seven, what does it say? When the base x is seven feet. Okay. So the dt in this at this exact moment when x is seven, we can find one half times dx dt is a constant, it's 2, times y, when x is 7, y is? Uh, 1. Nope. 1. 24. Oh, 24. 24. We did this using Pythagorean theorem to yep. find that. Wait, uh, so 24. We're deriving this? Or are we, just we had already done this work up yeah. here. X is 7. The first scenario was where x is 7, um, and we found that y is 24. We used the Pythagorean theorem to find that. How we did what? Dy dt. Dx over dt to two. Oh, because that's how fast the area is. Right. Uh, plus x. X is seven times dy dt at the moment that x is seven and y is twenty-four. We already did this. Which was? It was negative seven twelve. Over 
Find the rate at which uh, oh, the, the area is changing when, when the base is seven. Five twenty-seven over twenty-four. What? Slightly on the AP test, they're going to give you a fraction as, as your multiple choice indicator. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, you can just enter that and fraction. What's the last button? 524. At least know how to do that. Whoa, whoa. See, so find the rate at, hey, hey, <laughs> find the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house is changing when the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall. So now we have a new scenario. Oh, God, yes, so you're so Ah. You're really being such a pillar. Yes. Get over it. <laughs> okay, see? The thing they're asking about is here's our triangle. How fast is this changing? Can you find a relationship? Guys, can you find a relationship between uh, well let's let's see what they give us and what they ask about, okay? They're saying find the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the wall or the between the ladder and the wall is uh, the house is changing when the base of the ladder is seven feet. So they want to know how fast this angle is changing, and they're giving us information about this side, not this side. All right? They're giving us information about this yeah. side. Oh, oh, the opposite the side. That's opposite of what we're talking about. Sine. Sine of theta is equal to x over, over 25. Right? Right. Now, yeah. you might maybe Say well, that you know that's a tangent. Is x over y? We wouldn't do that. Why wouldn't we want to do that? Wait, what? Say that again. Why wouldn't we do tangent is x over y? Because we don't know the derivative. 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 the derivative. of the sine is? Cosine. Cosine of theta. D theta, dt, everything's with respect to t. Okay, let me still talk about the x equals uh -oh. 1 over 25 times dx dt. This is 2 feet per second. This is a constant. Uh, theta, can we figure out what theta is when the distance is 7? Seven over twenty-five equals the sine of theta. So theta equals the inverse sine of seven over twenty-five. Okay, what's two eighty-three? Two eighty-four. Two eighty-four. Two eighty-four. Okay, so they're asking about how fast theta is changing when x is seven. Um, I guess it depends on what you want to do. Because I want to this specific. Let's talk about this for, for a quick second here. Because that was a radian. Uh, so we just plug seven in here, right? Uh, 
When x is 7, now we want to know what theta is, because we're trying to plug in theta here. Okay. Okay. So what's theta? Well, the sine of theta is equal to 7 over 25. Mm -hmm. So the inverse. So the inverse sine means sine. there's an angle that has the sine of 7 over 25. What's that angle? That's what the inverse sine means. It says, here's the sine. Find the angle that has that sine. So 0.284, probably radians, or 16 degrees? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. 16.260. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't really matter, because what are we going to do with this? We're going to put it right there. Because if your calculator's in radian mode for, for this calculation, it'll also be radian mode for this calculation. Oh. If it's in degree mode for this calculation, it would also be in degree mode for this calculation. But wait, what if so we're on the AP exam? Which one do they want? Well, in this so scenario, it won't matter. Okay. Because you're going to find the angle in whatever units you, whatever it's in, and then you're going to find the cosine uh -huh. of that, and whatever mode you're in, as long as it's the same between the two, it won't make a difference. Is that like multiple choice? No, because whether this is in radians, uh -huh. I find radians, and then I plug radians in here, yeah. the cosine of that angle in radians or the cosine of that angle in degrees is going to be the same cosine. Okay. But I was more concerned about the, like, if you're just trying to find the inverse sign of 7 over 25, what would be the inverse? It just depends on who's asking and what they want. Do they want degrees or do they want radians? So we plug in 0.284. Now that's fine. And the cosine of 0.284, radians. Four nine six. We're not gonna get to thirteen, are we? You guys keep talking. I'm over here, so I mean, some of it's questions, some of it's complaining and laughing and joking. What's what is point nine six? is the cosine of point two eight four. Oh, okay. So d theta d t equals. 2 over 25 times 1 over 0.96. Find cosine for 0.96. Okay. This is a measure of how fast theta is changing with respect to time. So now we have to kind of say, what are the units of this? Well, theta could be in degrees or radians. What is it in? It's in radians. Okay. Go back and review if you don't remember this, but if we want to convert it from radians to degrees, we would just take this and multiply it by 180. Almost 100% certain that I have uh, videos up on this. I also have this video will be up. Uh, be free to come and ask some questions between now and next class, uh, which is uh, Friday. Or you can email me over the weekend or something. But it's Thursday. Thursday, what? Thursday. But the next time you meet, we can answer that. And we'll have a review day. No, he said you can talk with it. Uh, you can come in on and ask uh, questions on Friday, or you can ask questions over the weekend. I'm talking about next class. Next class. Oh, <laughs> next class. Is Okay, we'll so have a day on Monday? Yeah. Cool. So now uh, as a four